tying right the chronic stress that you dealt with at a at an early age have you tied that to the autoimmune disease absolutely <laughs> i was living this is how when i look back at it right hindsight is 2020 and mm-hmm. I, I don't see these things while i'm in it so if you're in it and you're out there and you're listening just take time take yeah. time and take a step back so great point it wasn't until i got fully on the other side that i could look back and say oh First of all, I'd been living that first 30 some odd years of my life in an active state of fight or flight. Yeah. So if I'm in an active state of fight or flight and my body is constantly producing all this cortisol, all this adrenaline, all these stress hormones, first of all, I'm going to be burnt out and tapped out. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I'm creating an unhealthy gut biome. Yeah. I think that the combination of living that way and producing those internal chemicals on my own, in addition to a car accident I got into in my mid-20s, yeah. where I had internal fixation, external reduction, still have pins and plates, but I was on antibiotics for a very long time, and I had pins sticking out of my arm for about three months. Mm. I was also on morphine for three months, mm. and I got food poisoning. So you take all of those things, you know, the antibiotics that change the gut flora, you add the bad mayonnaise that I had that changed the gut flora, you add in all of these stress hormones, my body just eventually said, I'm done. Yeah. I don't have the tools and the chemicals I need to function. I don't have the internal clock to say this is what I need to do to take care of myself. Yeah. And it just threw up its hands and said, I'm done. I have nothing left to give. You've been going all the way up here at this top speed in this state of agitation, not providing any good nutrition. So definitely, too, prior to getting sick, I still ate a lot of fast food. I still drank Coca-Cola all the time. It's it's easy and soothing. It's easy and soothing. And I also grew up without a lot of, like, snacks and treats and sugars. And so when I got out on my own, it was like, well, Oreo and Coke for dinner? Absolutely. McDonald's three times a day? Heck yeah. But that sugar is also an incredible coping mechanism for Mm -hmm. for internal pain or pain that cannot be seen. Right. That's uh, Give me the easy, fast dopamine hit. That's right. Which is because I need something right now. I can't even, I was in such a state of fight or flight, I couldn't think about tomorrow. Yeah. There was no such thing as planning for the future until my body said, you know what? We're done here. Not only was your body done, it turned against you. And and it started attacking, I'm going to assume it started attacking your thyroid first with Hashimoto's. Yep. That's where it all started. Can you share a little bit about that? Well, I think of it a couple of ways. Definitely in one way, like I said, it was my body living in that state of fight or flight and then all of a sudden just giving up. Like it had no fight left to give. It had no energy left. I was spent. I burnt my candle at all the ends. The other way I think of it is like the dog without a job. I was not introducing any type of external resilience. I wasn't working out, so I wasn't ripping and tearing my muscle tissues to grow muscles. Mm. I wasn't uh, feeding myself well. I wasn't pushing myself or introducing any extremes. It was just seeking comfort, seeking comfort, seeking comfort. Or introducing the good neurotransmission and the good hormones. Because all I wanted was instant comfort. I wanted to be surrounded, and I didn't realize at the time but what I think would happen, what had I think happened as well, is it's kind of like our immune system, our autoimmune is like a dog without a job. If you're not introducing these external experiences, there's no way to build resiliency. Yeah. So if you don't give the dog a job, the dog's going to destroy your environment. Yeah. If I don't take my dog for a walk multiple times a day, the dog's going to tear apart my house. Yeah. So if I'm not introducing these external factors to create resilience, I'm also not giving myself emotionally or mentally the strength to build those muscles to prepare me for the stressful things that are coming in the future. Yeah, to build resilience. Mm-hmm. It's a practice. I want to thank you for joining us today and our effort to inform and empower those on their journeys to healing. This mission is incredibly personal to us, and we thank you. We thank you for taking the time to be here today and to listen to us and hopefully spread the word so that we can help others in need.